All right, Brian, let's get dirty. A few things we're going to need. Wait, we're doing more soil work or no? No, no, this oh, okay. is a different kind of dirty. This oh, is solder okay. dirty. Oh, okay. Yeah. The so kind where if you smell chicken, it's time to stop. Precisely. Okay. Now, this is, the, this is actually a template of the 3D frame, but I cut it early because I didn't want any of the, uh, the columns to get in the way of, of the camera. So oh. it's, the same, it's the same thing. It allows us to work on it just as we would with here, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be nearly as cumbersome. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. So let's get that out of the way. The first thing we want to do is we want to mount this. Now, this was from the junk build. Watch last week's episode if you want to know how we made this. Essentially, this is a, a 10 strips of 5050 blue SM uh, surface mount display mm -hmm. uh, uh, technology devices, which <coughs> are on top of this. This was just the mounting bracket for an SSD. Mm -hmm. So we pulled this out of our junk box because we don't need a mounting bracket. Nope. And this becomes our heat spreader. And the reason why a heat spreader is important is because we want the heat from the LEDs to be pulled away from the LEDs. Right. They'll go through the metal here and then this is where we'll put like a heat sink with a fan on it. Right. So uh, what we've got is this. This is thermal adhesive which uh, we, it's like an epoxy. So we mix these two parts together. Hmm. We're going to put some right here, and then we put the heatsink fan that we pulled out from the junk build on top of this. And what that will allow us to do is to really to to keep this cool, which means the LEDs stay cool. And it'll hold it together, because this is different oh, yeah. than what you would use on like a CPU and a Oh, computer, no, no. A computer. This, this is epoxy. Okay. So this, I mean, you can lift that entire assembly v via Just the fan. Just that? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really, really strong, which also means Get it right because <laughs> you ain't taking that thing off. Right. Don't yeah. get it stuck to your hands. Keep it right. Keep, Keep it tight. It. Keep it tight. Yeah. All right. Uh, you'll notice the way that we designed this, you can't put this in the wrong way because the screws only line up A certain this way. way. So yeah. the screw holes are there and there. If I try to put this backwards, <laughs> uh, that, that's just it's not going to work. Gonna work yeah. That's just not going to work. So it goes in like this. Uh, I have soldered right down the middle. But you can feel free to solder on the side. I, I just kind of like doing it this way because I, <laughs> I feel like... It, it looks, looks clean. It looks clean. It looks a yeah. bit more badass, right? Well, it always reminds me of like a hot dog. It looks like uh, the ketchup down the middle of a hot dog. Uh, um, okay. I don't know why. Sure, sure. That's cool, man. No, I like it. Uh, uh, now, <laughs> you do hungry. need a couple of screws. Mm -hmm. uh, these are 632. This, these are uh, uh, three-quarter inch screws. Uh, because what's going to happen is, uh, again, it's, it's not going to work on this because this is slightly of a different diameter. But here, we have this build-out. Mm -hmm. And this build-out is what uh, allows this LED strip to stay on the top. Right. Uh, so if you compare it to this, this goes out about 10 millimeters. Well, you need a screw that's this big in order to hold that into place. Right. Uh, so for example, oh, actually, I can't take those off because mm -hmm. I don't have the long one. But this just goes on the side, and we just... Do like that, and uh, there. Th if you if you've done it right, you kept it tight, and you've kept it tight. This will just hold on. Wait, it, actually, it's probably easier for me just to do this outside of the case, like that. And you you do that for all four of them. This would lock it into place. Right. Now, you do really need to make sure that you screw in all four because this is the heaviest part <laughs> of the LED assembly. And you don't want it falling down onto your plant. Well, you especially don't want it falling water. down into the water since <laughs> that's where most of the voltage is going. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah that would so, be bad. So don't do that. Okay. Bad. But you'll, you, uh, you'll notice that in this one, we actually have two different types of lights. Uh, let me get my... Where did the key fob go? I am losing everything. <laughs> There's so, a lot of stuff on this set. There it is. So here, I've got this one that mm. gives me my grow light and I have this one which, uh, oh, no, that's the uh, Arduino. I have this one, there which gives go. me my full spectrum light. Right. Um, and so I put those on two separate circuits, but you will notice right here, there's only three wires coming out of here. That's because I've got two hot lines, so this is carrying my voltage, mm -hmm. and a single ground. So they are sharing ground. That makes sense. Uh, and uh, you'll notice it right here. I care if you could ME into this. So what I've got is, this is the ground line for all of those uh, LEDs in the array, right? Right. And right here, these little black ones, those are the ground lines for these. For the outside lights. Yeah. Right, so they are sharing that ground line. They're all going into the same the But same they're not sharing path. the power. They're not sharing power, otherwise they would turn on at the same time. That and I want to be able to turn them on independently. Mm -hmm. uh, so just remember, you don't need to run four wires down, you can run three. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I've done is, the power line for the fan is actually tied in to the power for the strip. So when I turn on the strip, it mm -hmm. automatically turns on the fan 
f that uh, removes the heat from the spreader. Right, and since you're only using two little strips for the other lights, you don't need the heat sink to. Yeah, the they're, they're really not, and, and those are real. They're not designed to be on all the time. Mm -hmm. These are designed to be on only when I want to actually see what the plants look like. Right. That gives me my full spectrum, uh, and you know, honestly. When you're talking about eight lights versus 80 lights, mm -hmm. they don't give you a lot of extra light. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's let's take a look at this because we need to add the full spectrum lights to this because right now all we've got is blue. Well, I'm using these. This is a strip of 5050s, mm -hmm. which is about as bright as you could get. They run at 12 volts, but you'll notice they're, they're waterproof. They're in the waterproof. The Ooh. little epoxy. Actually, here. I don't let's know if you can see. get in on this, Kara. Um, it's shiny. It's little shiny. See that shininess? So it's below a layer of plastic, of polymer, that waterproofs it. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, well, twofold. First, we need to get to those contacts, which yeah. are currently underneath. So you're going to have to, like, scrape that away? I'm going to have to scrape that. And the second thing is, if I, uh, if I enclose it like this, it actually allows the heat to build up, which I really, really don't want to happen. Oh, okay. That would be bad, uh, especially since... The these can actually get hot enough to melt this. Oof. I would oof. really not want my LEDs to melt through the LED fixture. That would be bad. So if you didn't have these connected to a heat sink, uh, just don't have them on all the time? Or? Yeah, well, again, I, I did not design the full spectrum LEDs to be on all the time. They're, right. they're designed so like you can come in and show, oh, look, this is what it looks like, right. and then switch back to the grow lights. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. But, so, but check this out. This is actually a lot easier than a lot of people think. All you need to do is cut. So I'm going to cut two, mm -hmm. uh, remember when you're dealing with these kinds of LEDs, these LEDs are actually in a set of three. Mm -hmm. Every copper contact, that's where you can cut. Right. If you cut in between them... <laughs> you're cutting the logic. The, oh, well, there, there's no logic here, but what's oh. happening is you're actually providing more voltage than those three lights are going to... Oh, I see. That's okay. not, that's, that's no good. So always cut at the copper. So I'm going to cut at the copper. So you've got a row of six then. Yeah. And these are just, these actually uh, clothing scissors. Mm -hmm. There scissors work. Scissors are scissors. Now here, it's ac it's still inside this polymer, so that doesn't give me much help. Right. I uh, originally I was using an exacto to scrape it away, and then I yeah. just got frustrated, and I started using my fingernails. It works a whole lot better. Really? Yeah. So all I have to do up. is just do this. So just like I, I would be removing the uh, the backing, yeah. instead I am gonna peel away. Oh yeah. See, it just comes right off. So once Perfect. you get it started. There we go. So now, I guess once you do that, though, do you have to worry about if water contacted that? that yeah, but part? I mean, this is so far off o over the bubbler; it's, yeah. it shouldn't it shouldn't hurt. Uh, if I if I was paranoid, though, what I could do is right now I could just snip that one piece I've peeled, put it back down, and, and then like tape it around or something. Well, it'll stay. It. It'll yeah. stay, and, oh. and then the rest of the strip will be waterproof. But I, I'm not really worried about that. So yeah. what I'm doing, I'm just going to keep pulling. Oh. You just have to do You're this. You're a madman. You have to do it slowly because if you do it quickly, it will actually it will snap, and then you have to find another edge. Oh, okay. uh, it really helps to have sharp fingernails, so I actually <laughs> grew this one out. <laughs> See what I do for you, Grow How? Wow. I mean, know how? I mean, you could just buy a not waterproof strip then. Right? You could, but um, the difference in price is negligible. Oh, okay. So and I, as well. the waterproofing actually does come in handy, so okay. I, I like okay. to have it. And, and this is, you know, this takes all of a couple of minutes for, for every one that you do. Um, hmm. Here, you wanna, you wanna give this a try? Whoa. Oh, there we go. So it. now I've got a nice clean strip that I can solder next to my array. Hmm. Uh, now, one thing, depending on how well your, uh, your strip was packaged, it may or may not stick to the, uh, to the plastic, to the filament. This one stuck no problem, in fact, that's, it's, still pretty tight. Mm -hmm. This one kept falling off, so I just put a little bead of hot glue. <laughs> to uh, hold hot, it glue in. hot glue is your friend. Nice. Absolutely is your friend. Uh, okay, and what we, again, we're gonna put this like this. I came up with another design that actually used 16 of these, so it was, it was double stacked like that. Oh, uh, okay. But then I actually did start running into some heating problems. Okay. Uh, a, f a future design of this, I may actually put another piece of metal here just, yeah, or, yeah, extended from here, maybe? Or? Right, right. Okay. But I, I didn't want to do that for this build. Yeah. Because yeah. I was I mean, tired. It's a little overkill. Th these are really just so you can see the plant, right? Precisely, so. precisely. All right, let's talk a little bit about the wiring. So we already explained how we are going to share a common off of this array, because we don't want to have to run four lines. Uh, we only want to run three. We want to run ground, and we want to run the hot line for each one of these. And that's enough 
Oh, let me get that out of there. That's enough for a, let, to let us individually control um, the, the grow lights hmm. and the full spectrum lights. Actually, I kind of like this. Whoa. It's like a disco. What? Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, oh, I'm not sorry. I digress. <laughs>